In this bulletin, dengue fever claims seven lives so far. Prime Minister in his first civilian outing and Catholics gear up for the elections. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Seven people have now lost their lives due to dengue. This has been confirmed by Health Minister Dr. Neil Sharma. There are currently 3,556 confirmed dengue cases in the country. The figures were released following Dr. Sharma's announcement that the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in Honolulu and Puerto Rico are providing technical assistance in the fight against the dengue outbreak. Dr. Sharma says the two centers will provide expertise assessment and surveillance between people and dengue mosquitoes. He adds the ministry is working closely with the various stakeholders to ensure public health safety. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Information is expected to release more information in a press conference tomorrow. 300 Fijians are expected to be employed in Fiji's first ever Mind Sand project. Amex Resources, an iron ore company, will invest over $200 million in this project, which will produce iron ore from the Bar River Delta. Akusi Tatale was at the Lautoka port as Prime Minister Vurenge Mbainimarama officiated at the project's groundbreaking ceremony on his first day as a civilian. Iron sand is used to create steel and is very popular in the growing economies of the world. Fiji is lucky to have healthy deposits of it. The government has announced that Amex Resources has met all compliance requirements to construct a new wharf and shiploading facility designed to export the mineral. The uh, concentrate that is dragged from the bomb delta will be transported here, where it will be processed and then exported to markets overseas. Production could rise as high as 1.5 million tons a year. The mining work will not only boost our economy, but will also complement government's efforts to dredge the Bar Delta, reducing the frequency and intensity of flooding during heavy rains. We all know how damaging and horrifying it is when a river bursts its banks and the flood waters rise. Within the last couple of years alone, we've suffered, suffered a number of devastating episodes. There's hardly a person in Fiji who hasn't felt the impact of flooding in one way or another. Lautoka Special Administrator Praveen Bala welcomes the mining project, confident it will benefit the public, especially those in flood-affected areas. This company is going to extract the river gravel from the mouth of Bar River, and I'm quite confident that by doing that, uh, it will lessen the flooding uh, uh, in the Bar River, and of course the people will benefit, in particular the market vendors. So I'm very happy that this project is going on. The port facility will include a berth, a barge unloading facility, a washing plant, a stockpile area, ship loading facilities, as well as workshops and offices. Amex anticipates dredging to start at the Bar River mouth by September this year. It's also waiting for the signing of a major offtake agreement with the Chinese company for an annual supply of 500,000 tons of magnetite sand concentrate over 10 years period. The international community has welcomed the handing over of military leadership. In a statement, the British Foreign Minister Hugo Swire says the handover represents a further milestone in Fiji's return to democracy. He adds the UK want the Fijian government to allow the Electoral Commission to act independently and that it hopes, quote, all of Fiji's political parties will be able to campaign without hindrance. It adds the UK looks forward to welcoming Fiji back into the Commonwealth family once an election which meets international democratic standards is held and democracy has been restored.
The French government also issued a statement saying it's happy and supports the Fijian government in the process of restoring democracy. The PM's decision brings Fiji another step closer to elections. Meanwhile, Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop today told the ABC's Pacific Beat program the handover is a positive move. This is an important milestone in Fiji's return to democracy. The Prime Minister handed over the military command to um, another military commander and on that basis we are pleased to see that another step has been taken towards democracy and the holding of elections. So we see it as an important milestone and uh, we also have congratulated the Prime Minister on this move. Meanwhile, the new commander, Brigadier General Mosesi Tikoe Tonga, paid a courtesy visit to the President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau at Government House today. The Social Democratic Liberal Party has confirmed their final 50 candidates to contest the general elections will be ready by the end of the month. Sodelpa has scanned through more than 100 applications and will make their first shortlist soon. Sodelpa is pleading with the government to implement the electoral decree, saying moving around without the rules is becoming too costly. We have the teams out there, the political parties, we have um, uh, the referee, which supposedly is the commission, but then we're waiting for the rules of the game. You know, it's, uh, it's funny that they blow the whistle when you, <laughs> you know, it's really near to, we need, need to explain to the players uh, what are the rules and regulations. So that is a very uh, urgent question for us in concern at this moment in time. Yeah? We are now at the moment working with the consultants from Australia and New Zealand uh, regarding the decree. As I said, that the uh, decree uh, addresses many practical issues um, regarding the actual conduct of the elections. So we, we hope to have that finalised by the end of this week. Pio Tambaywalu says he will not be able to discuss names of party candidates as yet. Uh, no, I, I cannot divulge that. Eh? I think it's unfair to start uh, explaining uh, the credentials, uh, the specific credentials of candidates in our lineup, because I'm not privy to that. Eh? I'm not a secretary to the... I'm also an uh, aspiring candidate, so I'm not privy to that information. Eh? The party says it's confident of doing well in the elections. Oh, I think it'd be very strong. Yeah. Uh, as they say in politics, we are quietly optimistic of, uh, of getting through. Prime Minister Vorenge Benimarama says the Electoral Commission is ready to put out the Electoral Decree soon. He says political parties are making a lot of excuses and are getting desperate because they know they will lose in the elections. Happy Salome Voka, FBC News. As the country gears up for elections, the Catholic Church has taken steps to prepare its flock for the polls. Mikalonga reports the Church has organized a series of lectures during the Lenten period aimed at helping Catholics make informed decisions and to participate responsibly in the elections. As a religious leader, we help. The lectures over Lent are on the social teachings of the Church, particularly on principles promoting the respect for human dignity, common good, freedom, collective decision making that include the grassroots and care for the poor and vulnerable in society. We would like to see that politicians uphold, government uphold this, uh, these principles. Archbishop Peter Loy Chong says the lectures will assist his flock have a deeper understanding of issues promoted by the church and prepare them to participate in the elections responsibly. If uh, politicians or parties do not, uh, you know, are not uh, seem to be contradicting what we value, so that gives them uh, a criteria of where, by, of where to put their, their, their vote. Very good uh, initiative from the Catholic Church, and uh, I hope other churches will follow the same path. The head of the Catholic Church is advising members of the faith to get as much information as possible between now and the elections. The lectures which starts this evening at the Sacred Heart Cathedral crib will be facilitated by the Archbishop, Father Kevin Ba, and a representative from the Council of Churches. Archbishop Peter Loy Chong has clarified the Catholic Church will not support nor promote any political party or politician. It rather support values that contribute to a better society. Mikalonga, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, a public lecture discusses kava consumption. 
Bulan 2 saya betul FM. Enak bandua ira kira. Bulan FM enam bandua inosor. Gue etah buat kebo teko lah sam bulan FM ngan. Bulan FM enam bandua ekor bu. Bulan FM enam bandua esawa. Bulan FM enam bandua loto kam. Bulan enam bandua enam bulan FM emba. Bulan FM enam bandua enosor in Singapore. Kalau tak lihat kerja warung enam bulan FM, lo tak. Alih akar warung enam bulan FM nampak dua NSR. Bulan FM nampak dua NSR. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Not all kava is safe for consumption. A herbal scientist from from Germany, sorry, who is in the country warns that while some kava varieties are safe to drink, others can cause irreparable harm. Chanel Sivan reports. The drink of the gods and Fiji's national drink, kava, is absolutely safe to drink if the right variety is consumed. Make sure that you do not sell um, bad kava quality like today kavas, like medicinal kavas, and that you peel the roots properly, or the chips properly, because that's not always the case as I could see on the markets here. In 2002, the European Union imposed a ban on imports of kava-based pharmaceutical products, citing the consumption of kava as the reason for liver disease and cancer. The EU ban broke international trade agreements under the World Trade Organization, which affected Fiji, Samoa, Tonga and Vanuatu. Kava protects from certain types of cancer, especially here in, uh, in the South Pacific Islands. I know the data from uh, Vanuatu, for example, heavy smokers mostly there, and still the incidence of lung cancer is lower, which is attributed to uh, kava drinking. However, Dr. Schmidt says one variety of kava sold in Fiji is dangerous for consumption. If you consume, ask what kind of kava you're taking. That's uh, the major uh, point I can give you. Just uh, make sure that you know what you are drinking. The kava variety which affects or dope swipers for two days is considered unsafe for consumption. This strain is sold locally but is not widely known to consumers. Do you know that some kava is unsafe for drinking? Yes, uh, some of this kava uh, is so, uh, my knowledge says it's uh, all good for drinking. Kava dope which lasts for two days may cause eye impairments and long-term illnesses. The next time you get kava, make sure you ask the right variety and buy the right one. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. The Association of Development Financing Institutions in Asia and the Pacific has recognized the Fiji Development Bank for Infrastructure Development in 2014. FDB Chief Executive Ndeve Tonganivalu says they acknowledge the contribution of three companies, Fiji Broadcasting Corporation, Sunagize Fiji Limited and Fiji Sugar Corporation. Tonganivalu says the bank provided $43.3 million to the three for capital projects. The FBC for its radio upgrade and addition of a television station, Sunagize Fiji Limited for its Port Denaral Marina solar project in Ba, as well as the FSC for biogas production in Vanua Levu. FBC Chief Executive Riaz Said Kayum says the company is happy to have contributed towards FDB's win. Uh, we're glad. Uh, we get recognition for the fact that uh, we obviously have done something very, very good. And that is the reason why FDB was able to win this award um, for themselves. And uh, FDB has, uh, has been uh, a great support. Um, it's a known fact that uh, for uh, FBC's development we took a loan from them and we are one of the best customers and I think if not the best customer because uh, we've, uh, we've never defaulted and uh, we're good customers, we always pay on time and it's a great working relationship with the FDB. The award will be presented to the FDB on April 24th at the ADFIAP meeting in Moscow, Russia. The Fiji Roads Authority says potholes in the central division is due to the lack of a proper repairs and maintenance structure over the last two decades. The authority says most roads are susceptible to potholes after heavy rains because the original ceiling is very fragile and repairs have never been up to standard. Ritika Pratap reports. The Fiji Roads Authority says resealed roads are too fragile to endure heavy rains, and that's why new potholes keep appearing. Prolonged heavy rain that leaves surface water standing and heavy vehicles running over it, we will continue to see potholes appear, sometimes very quickly, 
people need to understand that that's going to happen and, and, and take extra care. Neil Cook says the new contractors are now always on their toes to fix up the roads after heavy rains. Within days and, and in, the, in the couple of weeks after an event like this, the crews have caught up again, they've gone to all the hot spots, they've, they've, re they've filled all those potholes that have, that have um, you know, appeared and they get on with the process of programming the, the next lot of repairs. Cook says contractors undertaking current projects are ready to address any damage that occurs during construction because of Fiji's wet conditions. We will see some damage um, of the you know of the areas that are under construction when when rains like this come and we and we still have the heavy vehicles on them and so on, but um, you know, that's part and parcel of, of construction activity. We our contractors have to allow for that as they're as they're undertaking their works and their and their programming. Previously, it was very bad situation and uh, the cost of repairing for the taxi and all the other cars it was too high again you know and uh, these uh, new people who took over recently are doing a very good job they were not packing uh, very good but now i mean they are really good on it the authority resealed over 100 kilometers of roads last year out of the 1500 kilometers that is identified for reselling the speed of the walk has been affected by the wet conditions over the last few months ritika pratap FBC News. The Lautoka City Council is building new accommodation for market vendors who sell their produce at the Sugar City Market. It is expected to provide much needed space for those who currently shelter in and around the market area, especially on weekends. The market vendors accommodation uh, has started and uh, we are uh, expecting that sometimes in uh, mid of April we will have the opening. It's a 60 bed uh, accommodation and uh, about 80% of the work has been done. So we're just waiting for the opening. We turn to sports now and Jamie, what's the latest? Good evening in sports tonight. Missing from the National 7 side for some time now, Emosi Vudango is looking to impress the Tamara 7s this weekend. Also up ahead, Fiji Sports Commission breaks its silence on Athletics Rift. Stay with us for the details. Mirchi FM is hot. Welcome back to FBC Sports. Former Fiji rep Emosi Budango has vowed to impress national coach Ben Ryan at the Mara Sevens that start tomorrow. Budango will feature for the Osea Kolinisau coach the Covenant Brothers at the two-day tournament with current national rep Chona Tuitonga. Confident and uh, because I was working hard for when I came back from America and I came back from the Korkus, I was talking to Ben Ryan and and he, when I have, I didn't select it, and I think, for my, I think I was looking for my, I see my fitness was not enough. That's why I was working hard on last year, and this year I think I'm confident, and I will work hard. Meanwhile, Digicel has come on board to help the Covenant Brothers side to the tune of seven thousand five hundred dollars. Still with sevens, the Lomaiviti Barbers is banking on some former and current national reps to strengthen their bid in this weekend's Fiji Bitamara sevens. Even without the services of seven star Benito Masilevu, the side believes they have enough firepower to tackle the local big guns. Talin Dadakadaka reports. National sevens rep Benito Masilevu will be on the sidelines when the Barbers compete in the Fiji Bitamara sevens. But the side has roped in former Sevens reps Niumaya Dakadaka and Sam Umbola, as well as current training squad member Marika Bunimbaka Jr. to lead their quest for victory. Experience cannot be bought. These key players will have a lot to share, which the younger players can draw from and uplift their game during the tournament. A player to watch will be utility back Semi Masilevu, the younger brother of Benito. The former St. Bede's college sprinter is ready to step out of his brother's shadow and make his own mark in the rugby arena. 
My brother tells me to keep training hard and continue to work towards improving my game. I'm waiting on God's calling for me to make the cut for the national team. On paper, the Barbers look like a formidable team. Sevens fans can expect fireworks when these boys step onto the field tomorrow. Talendo Rakadak, FBC Sports. The Fiji Sports Commission has broken its silence on the current administrative rift within Athletics Fiji. So, who is running the sport? That's the question that's confused many and the reason to help find a quicker resolve. A legal opinion from the Commission is now in. Elena McDonald reports. Everyone wants athletics to move forward. But until the executives can abide by their own rules, it's the athletes who stand to lose out the most. The legal binding constitution is the 2008 constitution, not the 2010. And that is our legal opinion, and I'm prepared to say that because I've already had meetings with all the parties. With this legal opinion in, the special general meeting in January has been deemed an illegal act, and therefore any decisions made, which includes appointment of Athletics Fiji executives at the meeting, has become null and void. Yeah, they mediate when, uh, when they have issues uh, within uh, federations. Uh, but the, the mediation uh, that they do is free. Uh, the, the federations uh, have a choice. They can accept uh, the ruling from the sports commission, but if they don't, if they take it any higher, then they do it at their own cost. The question now is, at what cost are those involved willing to drag on this so-called power trip at the expense of the athletes? The AGM has been called for March 19th in Nandi, and until then, officials have been advised to remain silent. An athletics team is bound for the Australian Championship next week. We can only hope the officials have stayed within their lanes for this one. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. The Nandi football side has signed two strikers in an effort to boost its goal scoring. Former super marksman Samuel Ndrunru, along with Tone Salaune have been roped in to provide the much-needed firepower up front. The two started training with, with the side this week, while Salaune will feature this weekend against Rewa in the Fiji Sun Skipatuna National League. Ndrunru's participation remains doubtful. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, st we still have to wait for his release to come through, so we're not sure if, uh, if he's going to feature this weekend. I think we need to um, concentrate on our finishing. Uh, that's been lacking uh, in the last couple of games, starting from the CVC. Uh, we create a lot of chances, but we are not able to score. Uh, defence, uh, we need to make sure our defence is tight. Uh, and uh, Rewa, Rewa last year, they beat us in the second match uh, here in Prince Charles Park. So we know how, how strong they are. And we need to make sure we get to them early, uh, get an early goal uh, and shut the crowd down. The game will be played at 3 p.m. on Sunday at Ratu Dakambau Park in Nausori. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. <laughs>
Fine, fine. <laughs> Looking at the map, a bit of a dull day with clouds and showers over the central division here and the northern division up there. The western side, however, enjoyed a beautifully fine day without a cloud in sight. Looking at temperatures, Bars the highest on 34, Lambasa follows on 33, Suva and Lautoka are on 32, and Nandi and Savu Savu are the coolest on 31. Tomorrow, it's possible that the West will experience afternoon showers, while Savu Savu, Lombasa, and the capital will have to put up with brief showers throughout the day. That rounds things up weather-wise. Before I go, though, take a few seconds to enjoy this gorgeous scene behind me taken at Golden Point in Rakiraki. What struck me was the reflection here. See that? Captured so well on camera. And if you've got any great pictures to show us, please email them to citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. We'd love to have them. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. Before we leave our main stories again, dengue fever has claimed seven lives in Fiji. PM in his first civilian duty opens Newport and Catholics prepare for general elections. Now to the poll question for this week, we're asking, should people be penalized for not adhering to weather advisories? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's FBC News for tonight. Till tomorrow, from the team and I, bye for now. Radio Fiji 1 and 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 Radio Fiji 1 and